kids, and welcome to Awesome Oceans, the show that takes you out of the classroom and face to face with the creatures under the sea. We'll be looking at everything from giant squid to stealthy sharks. I'm Sam, and this is Cheryl Lynn, a marine biologist and underwater explorer. This week we're looking at chondrichthys, and those are sharks, skates, and rays. Okay, Sherilyn, let's get right to it. I understand you have some keywords for us again today? That's right, we have three keywords today. The first one is cartilage, the second one is Lorenzini, and the third one is pelagic. Okay, well, what is cartilage? Is that what's in my nose? Yes, so cartilage is in our nose, the bridge of our nose, and in our ears. So chondrichthians are fish that are made of cartilage. So chondro means cartilage, and ichthys means fish. And I have an example here of a cartilaginous skeleton of a spiny dogfish shark. And this is all cartilage. It might look a little bit like bone in the, uh, the vertebra here, but it's all cartilage, as well as the shark jaws that we have here. This is all cartilage. Even though the teeth look really strong and uh, bone-like, it's all cartilage. And cartilage is a strong fibrous substance that helps with flexibility so the sharks can swim faster. And we're talking about rays, skates, and sharks, but we also have ratfish. And ratfish are these little guys over here. They're also made of cartilage. Um, so they're a lot more light. Their body is not as heavy because bone is a lot heavier than cartilage. So sharks have less of a problem with sinking. However, if sharks stop swimming, they do tend to sink in the water. So they need to keep swimming using their very powerful caudal tails. So chondrichthys are among the oldest species on Earth, and as such, they have very diverse habitats, uh, feeding preferences, and sizes and shapes. Sherilyn, what type of habitats can we find them in? Well, just like you said, chondrichthians have a very diverse range of habitats that they can live in. Some live deep down in the ocean, in the cold, dark waters of the abyss. Some sharks live in warm, tropical waters of the Caribbean. Some live all the way up near Greenland. And we even have sharks here in the St. Lawrence River called the Greenland shark. Originally lived around Greenland, but now it lives in the deep brackish waters of the St. Lawrence River. And so they can live in a variety of places and they have amazing adaptations for living in these locations. Oh wow, Sherilyn, I can't stop looking at these teeth. What type of food do sharks eat? Well, this kind of a shark we think is a mako shark, not entirely sure, but sharks are carnivores for the most part and they're opportunistic feeders. So this kind of a shark would feed on fish and possibly other sharks as well as marine mammals. But some sharks, like the whale shark, which isn't a whale at all, it's a shark, it's the biggest fish in the sea, they feed on smaller organisms, they don't even have any teeth. They feed on krill and other fish that just kind of get in the way of their huge mouth. And they filter out the water through their gills. And whatever's left behind, the fish and the krill, they can put that in their stomach. And there's another really interesting kind of shark that's called a cookie cutter shark. This is a smaller shark that lives in the Arctic, cold waters. And it'll attack big fish, big marine mammals that dive down. And they'll take a little cookie cutter sized bite out of the fish and then they can eat they can live and eat off of the fish for a long period of time because it doesn't actually kill its prey. Well, let's hear a little bit about the shark's cousin, the ray. I understand there's a ray the size of a pancake. Yeah, that's right. So rays, just like sharks, are also very diverse in their size and their habitat in which they live in. And the pancake ray is a really small little guy that lives right on the bottom of the ocean. And there's also a ray that's called the manta ray, which some of you might have heard of, that's enormous. They can grow up to 25 feet across, and they don't even have any teeth either. They also eat krill and zooplankton. And they do the same thing as the whale shark and the basking shark. They filter the water through their mouth and out their gills and collect all the little itty bitty bits of food that are caught inside. And they can be all kinds of different shapes and sizes as well. And they've got this beautiful way of swimming through the water. Isn't it a bit like flying through the sea? It is. It's kind of like a bird flapping its wings. They're these huge sort of flattened organisms and they have these beautiful wings that they flap through the water. They're called pectoral fins, but they've been adapted to flap through the water and they can move fairly fast actually. Wow. Are they are these friendly? Are they friendly rays? They are very friendly. Manta rays are some of the most curious organisms in the ocean and they love swimming up with humans. It's not the best idea to get too close to them because they can have some some spines and barbs.